American democracy. I'm going to turn things over to Andrew Patterson, a sophomore political science major. Chris Whipple is an acclaimed documentary filmmaker, writer, journalist, and speaker. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree in history from Yale College, during which time he had the opportunity to intern with the committee that investigated the Watergate scandal. Since then, he has become a multiple Peabody and Emmy award-winning producer at CBS News, 60 Minutes, and ABC News Prime He is the Chief Executive Officer of CCWHIP Productions. He is also the writer and executive producer of Spy Masters, which we will watch tonight. The film tells the story of the CIA through one of its most controversial periods with interviews of the previous directors of the CIA who got to make the life and death decisions that shaped an era. Please help me in welcoming Chris Whipple. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm just going to say a couple of words and then get out of the way. Is that feedback? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to say hello and then get out of the way so you can watch the film. Um, but we're, I'm really honored to be here tonight and so pleased that you've come to see the film. It, it's not just my work. Um, we had an amazing, uh, my partners Jules and Gideon Naudet, French filmmakers who made the film 9-11, um, and uh, Susan Zarinsky, uh, a, legendary, a legendary producer at CBS News. Um, Al Briganti, uh, a great cameraman and editors who, who all contributed to, to this. I'll just tell you quickly how it began. Um, we had done a film on the White House Chiefs of Staff for Discovery in 2013. And having done that and having interviewed every living Chief of Staff, we thought, okay, what do we, what do, we do for an encore? And my partner, Julien, said, well, you know, when you see a closed door, you want to open it. And the ultimate closed door is the CIA. So we opened the door, and this is what we found. Hope you enjoy it. Um, the, uh, it this was a truncated version of the original film. Um, so there were, there were a couple of awkward endings. It's, you may have noticed, and a slightly abrupt ending. And that, that's my fault um, in, uh, in trimming it down for this evening's uh, uh, event. But thank you all for coming. and. Um, be delighted to take any questions you might have. Yeah. In any of your discussions, did you a solution? Oh. Um, in any of your discussions, did any sort of solution to the sort of inefficiencies within the CIA come up by the directors? Any proposed like mechanisms, like how can the CIA become more efficient? Because it seems like a lot of the issues that have come up is, you know, the departments aren't talking, or we have intelligence officers in Germany telling us, you know, the source isn't reliable, but we're not getting that information. Um, did they discuss that at all? Well, I think that, um, you know, obviously, this is a rich subject, a complex subject, and there are all kinds of inefficiencies. Uh, one, you know, one of the major ones was, uh, was immediately prior to 9-11, there was absolutely, there was almost a, a, a Berlin Wall between the FBI and CIA. They weren't communicating. Um, that's changed. Um, but <clears throat> you'll never eliminate uh, inefficiencies and disagreements. And, you know, we, to use the cliche, I mean, we, we called it a battle for the soul of the CIA. There's, there's real tension and passionate disagreement about the balance uh, that CIA should have between intelligence gathering on the one hand and paramilitary action on the other. Um, so, you know, there will, there will always be tensions and inefficiencies and disagreements and that's what we, we tried to bring out in the film. Anybody else? Yeah. Gives individual kill orders for these drone strikes. For he's spending, I mean, you'd be every day ordering another kill. If is that what it meant no. to say that that goes across his desk for each of these decisions? No. Uh, and in fact, if you if, as you saw in Act One, um, when Leon Panetta was at the funeral, 
in Arlington Cemetery and, and, and got word from the CIA that they had a terrorist in the crosshairs of a drone. Um, you remember he called the White House and, and told them, and they said, this, this one's on you, Leon. Um, it was stunning to Panetta uh, when he got there. Panetta's a guy who's been around. He was a CIA. He was a White House chief of staff, a congressman. Um, and, but he was shocked by the, the extent to which he, as CIA director, was making life and death decisions every day. And that was one example. Um, that one was Panetta's decision, and he made them all the time. That was shocking to me. I mean, I, th I think a lot of people assume that lethal action uh, is always ordered by the White House. Um, not true. Um, and in fact, um, under, under George W. Bush, you may recall that that's when drones became, they, they changed from just simply eyes in the sky to, to lethal weapons. And George Tenet raised the question uh, that's never been answered which is, do you want the head of a civilian agency that's not in the military chain of command making decisions on life and death? Um, nobody's answered that question formally, uh, but the practice is that CIA is now both an intelligence organization and a paramilitary army. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. I, the, other, the other part of the answer, I guess, is that when it comes to American civilians like Anwar Av Avlaki, the cleric, um, you know, and the so-called kill list. Um, those are very high-level targets that are, that are determined uh, by the president. I mean, the president makes those decisions, certainly, certainly with a, uh, a terrorist who also happens to be an American citizen. Yeah. At some point, one of the directors, one of the previous directors, um, mentioned um, how he thought that it might have been more reasonable to have a third or, I guess, second party, almost like he was implying a judiciary body to evaluate the president's decisions before he made that. Um, did, did they provide any information about their proposal for what that would look like? And if that did apply to the president, would that also apply to the, rec the director of the CIA, who's also making kind of lower profile um, commands? You know, it's not, not, not exactly clear, um, but, you know, William Webster and, and Bob Gates were very, were passionate about that. They, they felt that, um, and I, I love William Webster. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with, you know, take, take sides here, but I, uh, Webster is, to me, um, kind of a conscience of the CIA. He's a guy who, prior to that, was FBI director and a, and a judge, and you know, really respects the rule of law, and I think he's eloquent uh, about it. He's also, you know, 94 years old, and he was playing tennis the next day after we uh, interviewed him. Um, anyway, you know, I think that they were specifically addressing the issue of U.S. citizens um, and, and saying that, um, you, you know, Gates and Webster both felt that there ought to be a uh, an independent body or, or, a, or a court. Um, what is it, the FISA court uh, that, that uh, signs off on uh, NSA surveillance? Uh, anyway, it's something like that. <clears throat> and whether, whether they would extend that to every drone strike, I'm not sure. But maybe, maybe some would. But I think they were specifically talking about that. Yeah. Did your... Um in your hours of interviews with the directors, did they ever talk about the challenge of being an outsider to the CIA, like a judge coming in and trying to, it must be terribly difficult to build the trust of the longtime spies for someone, especially a judge or someone who's really yeah. from outside. Well, you know, uh, Webster uh, had, had his difficulties. Webster came, when Webster came in, in fact, the word that went around the CIA was, here comes the judge. <laughs> we're, you know, he's going to clip our wings. We're in trouble now. Uh, but he won their respect, and um, uh, you know, by being a just by being a good leader, I think. Um, you know, I, David Petraeus. Uh, we we heard some we heard some interesting stories about Petraeus when he arrived at uh, CIA. That was a real culture clash. Um, one of the first things Petraeus did that did not endear himself to, uh, to, the, to the rest of the CIA was he complained about the way his 
fruit was being cut uh, in, in, in the, when he came in for breakfast. He didn't like the way, the, when he went running, that the way the water bottle was being handed to him as he was running. Um, this immediately got all the way around CIA, and he was the laughing stock of CIA for uh, the first, probably the first three months that he was there. Ultimately, he was just beginning to gain everybody's respect, uh, and when when the the scandal uh, happened, uh, when he was uh, caught uh, sharing classified information with his mistress, so it's it's sometimes it's not easy to come in from the outside. Um, Probably the two most uh, two, the two most popular directors in recent history, I would say, were uh, George Tenet and Leon Panetta. Uh, partly because they're larger than life, gregarious personalities. They they, but mostly because I think everybody at CIA felt they had their back. You know that, that Panetta and Tenet. Uh, would go to bat for them and defend them. And that's a big deal at CIA. A quick technical question. How yeah. did you get all the f footage, like the footage of those um, drone strikes and the... <sighs> that was not... <laughs> boy, did that... Boy, that was not easy. I mean, we had an amazing staff of, uh, you know, photo researchers and, and, and a really top-notch staff of people that helped us with that. And but. All kinds of sources, Pentagon. Um, we couldn't get it from CIA. CIA doesn't even acknowledge that they operate drones. Uh, you'll notice that um, there's a we superimpose uh, archive over some of those shots. Um, that was to be clear that we didn't have the actual shot. You know, um, so you know some of this. These are drone strikes. Some of them are CIA. Some of them are uh, Pentagon. Uh, but it was, it, it was a long, very difficult effort uh, unearthing a lot of this footage. Yeah? Doesn't admit to operating drones. How did you convince the directors to admit to using lethal force? Well, you know, it's, it, it was fascinating to us because I was saying over lunch today uh, that, you know, it's, 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 it's funny because when the, when the CIA directors themselves write their memoirs, um, they often have these huge battles with the CIA censors uh, over what they can, what they can use. And um, we were in the incredibly lucky position to, you know, when we did our interviews, there weren't any CIA censors around. Uh, it was just us and the directors. Um, it was really on a case-by-case -case basis um, that you know some directors are willing to, some of them are larger than life and, and just don't like being told what they can talk about. Bob Gates, um, nobody tells him what he, what he can talk about and what he can't. Um, you know, they didn't jeopardize any, any ongoing operations and they would never do that. But the whole notion that the CIA won't acknowledge operating lethal drones is just silly. You know, I mean, it's common knowledge. Um, so I think the directors felt, you know, I'm going to talk about that. As long as I'm not jeopardizing a, an ongoing operation, I'm going to talk about that, even if the official line is, we don't talk about it. So if that answers the question, it was a case-by-case -case basis. And you saw Petraeus saying, signature strikes? I don't I have no idea. Uh, and on the one hand, and then you saw uh, Mike Hayden elaborating on signature strikes, uh, uh, you know, all day. So it was interesting to see to see that. Why well, I, I don't I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that kind of variance between and among the directors. Yeah. I was surprised at the number of directors uh, that you that you interviewed. Uh, which begs the question is, is there a term limit when you're a director? You know, I don't believe there is. Um, and, you know, more often than not, a new president brings in a new CIA director. But in the case of, uh, of uh, George Tenet, um, you know, he was, he was 
CIA director under Clinton and George W. Bush decided to keep him on. And I think, I think the reason he did, and the reason uh, Tenet had such a long tenure, was because W's father, 41, uh, who was revered at the CIA and who, who loves the organization and was, I think, was whispering in W's ear and saying, listen, you know, I think you should keep George on. Give him a chance. You know, this shouldn't be a political football. You know, you shouldn't change directors on every election. And I think that's why W kept, uh, kept tenant. Um, but that's unusual. And, uh, but that's, that's why tenant wound up there so long. Yeah. So it seems to be like a, a recent trend um, like in politics to debate over what, what's fact and like what's true. Um, I think we sort of saw that a bit in the film. Um, I know from just sort of studying drones that there's this like push for transparency and that like the best way to curtail you know, signature strikes or strikes that harm civilians is to you know, have people be more informed about them, about the policy. I don't know how much I agree with that, but would you sort of say, or how does the you know, fact that we have directors directly um, disagreeing with congressional reports about what is fact, like what does that do to how we relate to the agency? How does that, you know, how does our trust in government change because of that disagreement? You know, what's, what's the future kind of hold for that relationship, I guess? Well, I mean, I think it makes it tough when, when you've got, um, when you've got a absolutely diametrically opposed camps um, talking about enhanced interrogation and whether it was effective or not, for example. Um, the Senate majority, Democratic Senate majority of the Intelligence Committee said in no uncertain terms that enhanced interrogation was ineffective. It did not disrupt plots or save lives at all. It was completely ineffective. Um, and then you have the, the Republicans on the same committee and the CIA directors uh, who presided over the program saying exactly the opposite. You remember the 20 cases where George Tennis says they are wrong on all 20 cases, period, end of sentence. Um, it makes it tough, you know, to, to decide. I mean, on the one hand, the majority, uh, Democratic majority report looked at 60 million emails or something like that over five years, and, you know, but they didn't interview a single CIA officer or director, not one, um, even though, and they claimed that they didn't do that because they might have put them in legal jeopardy, which just wasn't true. You know, the, the directors were ready to talk and they would have defended the program. So, you know, what does that tell you? Um, I don't know, uh, but it, it certainly tells you that there's, you know, uh, there's a partisanship going on, and you know, whoever said democracy would be easy, you know, people have to, people have to look at, you know, I think transparent transparency is better than not having it. Uh, so, as citizens, all we can do is, you know, listen to both sides and and make up our minds. I think. Anybody else? Well, I've, yeah. This is something we talked about in our, the, the non terrorism aspects and the mission. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're focused on post 9 11. To what extent did you get out from them the, the other aspects uh, that they had responsibility for? Well, we went, in, we went into this constant focused on um, the whole, the, the, quest, the overarching question of our film because. CIA is just obviously a vast subject, as, as you pointed out. Um, our focus was counterterrorism uh, and how far should the CIA go to, to keep us safe? You know, what are, what are the rules of, you know, what's fair game? Uh, what are the rules of engagement? Um, but we certainly, certainly the subject of, you know, this whole tension between, um, intelligence gathering and paramilitary action came up and, and was a key part of our discussions. And, um, and, you know, Bob Yates, for example, makes, I think we talked about this a little bit over dinner, Bob Yates argues that um, we've been become seduced by paramilitary action and they, 
the original charter has kind of been being neglected. The, it was, the original charter was to be an, an intelligence gathering agency, and we used to be good at that, you know, and we're not any good at it anymore, according to Gates. Um, you know, the, we missed the weapons of mass. Just imagine how different the world would be if we, if CIA had, had got weapons of mass destruction right instead of wrong, um, and we hadn't invaded Iraq. Um, CIA completely missed the North Korean nuclear reactor in Syria. You know, the Israelis saw that and told us about it. We didn't even see it. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, there's a, we're, we've got a lot of other stuff that uh, wound up on the cutting room floor. Uh, you know, we're thinking about trying to do a 10-part series. Uh, we're gonna see if Netflix wants a 10-part series on the CIA that, that does not, not only counterterrorism, but the Cold War and, you know, the whole fascinating history, modern history of the CIA. Um, so maybe there's, there will be more life for this material, we'll see. Yeah. Direction of the CIA that you got from the from the founders about like the, the balance between um, paramilitary operations and intelligence and when it comes to drones and executive orders, um, especially given you know our current uh, political situation, have there, has there been any kind of sense of the possible most likely direction the CIA will be? Taking? I think it's going to be a constant. I, I don't think uh, paramilitary uh, covert paramilitary action is going to go away. I don't, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's, it's always a question of the balance. And I think that, um, uh, you know, it's an irony that a Nobel Prize winner and constitutional law professor presided over a dramatic increase in lethal drones, right? Um, there are reasons for that, because drones are, compared to every other form of military action, unbelievably precise. Uh, there are you know, few, way fewer civilian casualties than putting troops on the ground or dropping bombs. So you, know, you can understand why drones are relied on so heavily. I will tell you this in terms of um, you know, what direction the CIA is going. Um, I think President Trump is going to have a big surprise in store for him if he tries to go back down that road of enhanced interrogation and waterboarding and, and a hell of a lot worse, as he would put it. Um, I don't think the CIA, I think he's going to have a really, to use his word, a hell of a hard time uh, getting anybody at CIA to do that. Um, so I think enhanced interrogation is not going to, not coming back uh, anytime soon. Um, so, yes? Well, you can get it on Showtime. It's still playing on Showtime uh, and Showtime On Demand. Somebody told me recently that it's on regular, sh there's Showtime and then there's Showtime 2, I think, and then there's, but anyway. Um, <laughs> you can get it on demand. You can get it on demand. Um, so that's probably the best way. And if that fails, I've got a few extra DVDs. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a few DVDs. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to give you one. I brought a few. I don't have them right here, but I have them back at the. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I'm flattered that you want to see the whole thing. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it.